on everyone I'm here with a brand new type of video this is something you guys have not seen from me but something I've been wanting to do for a really really long time and that is just a, like a discussion video a video going over brand new cars I've been wanting to do this ever since I've been a fan of Asian Eyes and Cyber Knight so and many other type of YouTubers out there like Ross and all his Pokemon and Digimon videos and things like that you guys are awesome and I'm finally getting into it and I'm gonna be doing some rush do you know going over some rush dual cards over here and you know, I, I look around YouTube and we don't really have like a big YouTube channel that really talks about Rush Duel cards, going over them, the brand new cards, getting them excited. Sometimes I look at the older YouTubers and I'm like, ah, say something about the brand new cards. And then we don't really, they don't really talk about anything older. They don't really know about Rush Duels. They're just like, hey, here's this card. Um, Yeah, it sucks. And it's like, dude, you don't even know anything much about Rush Duels. But I, you know what? I do. I'm for you fans, I want to bring some actual insight about some of the brand new cards because I'm excited. I'm super excited. We're going to go over cards from the Chaotic Omega Rising Duelist Deck Modification Pack. That's the newest Rush Duel set that's going to be coming out, people. And if you guys have already seen some of the cards that are coming out, it's already insane. We'll continue down with the Fusion trend. And the first card we're going to be going over, or the first cards, I should say, are going to be Gakuto related. Yes, because Gakuto and Romin are in front of the pack. They look awesome in front of it. This is going to be awesome. Oops, and I'm sorry, there was some random video playing in the background. Okay, so the first card we're going to go with is a normal monster. It's going to be called Valkyrian Sukuri. It's your standard level 1, 1400 defense, 0 attack point monster, which is great in the Gakuto style deck. You want cards with 0 attack points in that deck anyway. To me, this card is going to be replacing Turtle because it serves the same function as being a 0 attack point monster. That's level 1. All important factors. The only difference is this is actually a fusion material. So that's already cool. Um, sadly, it's a fairy monster. If this is a warrior, there was so much bigger synergy with some cards in his deck. But you all know Gakuto's deck is a mixed bag anyway. It, as for the card you really want to know about, that's going to be his brand new fusion monster, which is Yami Tarasu the Divine Delayer. This card is a level 9 light warrior type, a celestial warrior type fusion effect monster. Obviously, it's be effect monster. Actually, that's not true. We did see Labyrinth Tank, and that wasn't an effect monster. It has its attack and defense are both 3,000, which is the highest rated stats of any fusion monster. There hasn't been a monster with both such high stats before. The only monster that even came close to that in terms of attack point was Dragon Star F. This card has 3,000 attack and defense. So, of course, the materials are going to be Yamiru the Dark Delayer, which I used to love Fiendish this commander. I, mean, I guess that's the now new translated name for it. Not sure where it came from, but yeah, that's what we're gonna go with. And it's gonna be, of course, fusing with Valkyrian Sukuri, who's the card we just went over. And just like it's, you know, previous from Yami Ru, it's a stun card. You know how devastating Yami Ru could be when all we had was tribute. Some it was such a rough card to get around, especially if your opponent could keep bringing out Yami Rulers. Of course, they were stunned as well, but it allowed them to build up what they kind of wanted to do, and you kind of had to work around it a little bit. This card facilitates that same thing, but instead as a fusion monster, and we're going to go over it. So its requirements for its effect, or its choice effect, I say, is you can activate this card, activate this by sending the top part of your deck to the graveyard, and you have your choice effect. First effect is until the end of your opponent's next turn while this card is face up, this card gains 500 attack, and neither player can special summon level 9 or lower monsters in face of attack position. Yeah, that is insane. So pretty much everything but maximums are immune to this card when it's special summon. So let's go over that. It's going to have 3,500 attack points both on your turn and the opponent's turn. Neither player can special summon level 9 or lower monsters in attack mode. There's not a lot of things that can get over... I mean... In terms of fusion monsters, nothing's pretty much going to get over this thing, right? This thing is going to be insane. Of course, you can still tribute summon and just get over it that way. There's nothing stopping, let's say, Seven's Road Magician from getting over this guy. But this guy is going to have 3,500 attack points on both players' turns. So you can't even crash into it with, like, let's say, a Blue Eyes White Dragon. But you still can get rid of it with things like Heavy Metal. You can decrease it with Shockly Dragon. There are ways around this card, but it's just an amazing card that can stun fusion heavy, stun fusion decks, especially Yugo's deck, which is completely fusion based and doesn't really have a good tribute summonable monster that can actually stop this guy. So, it does have another effect. I don't. I, the only time you're going to use this effect is if you're going to go for the win and your opponent's hiding in defense position. And it says change the battle, change the position of one monster in the field. That's it. 
Now, this can also change the battle position of one of your monsters. So if you can somehow manage to bring, to have this guy up, then bring out a Yami Ruler, use Yami Ruler's effect, then you can change it to attack mode. Now your opponent can't tribute summon level seven or higher monsters, plus they can't special summon level nine or lower monsters. I don't think it's gonna happen. It's a very hard thing to get both those guys on the field. But if you can do it, I mean, that'll be pretty devastating. So next we're gonna go over my girl Romine's cards. She's got some, she's got some interesting cards over here, people. So her first card is called Psychic Upper. It's a level six dark psychic type monster, 1800 attack zero defense. And it's effect is during your main phase that this card was normal special summon. You can activate this card by sending the attack card your deck to the graveyard. This card loses 800 attack and until the end of the turn, you, then you gain 800 life points. Now the attack decrease doesn't really matter because you're going to be using that as a fusion material anyway, but the gaining of the life points is really, really nice since you're going to want to run down, you know, get, get your life points up there because your fusion monster, so let's see, the fusion monster is called Candy Live. It's a level 9 light omega psychic type monster. There we go. We have a brand new type for roaming as well, and it's Omega Psychic. Bring it back to those days of Cyframe Lord Omega. This is amazing, people. I mean, I do wish it was a little bit more creative in terms of the name, and I kind of wish it went instead of light, it was a dark monster. That way, it could have been like roaming and got Crystal Switch their ace attribute. I mean, their ace attributes in a way that would have been pretty cool. All right, so of course, Fusion Effect Monster with 2800 attack and 2400 defense. Very respectable stats. Its materials is candy, you know that really expensive super rare level one normal monster yeah that card i am so glad i pulled that card in the pack people because it is completely important it has a lot of good spell support cards as well so i can see why it's a little bit high on higher than some super rares but man guys it's price tag is pretty hefty if you guys can get yourself one i suggest i suggest getting it now before it gets too expensive and one copy I've been doing very well with because thanks to Romance Pick, you can always find a way to get candy back, candy into your hand. You could mill it, or if it's right there, you can get it to your hand. There's a million ways to get candy back, even with a single copy. No need to break bank and buying a full playset as long as you got three um, Romance Picks. So the requirements for this effect is, is of course, it's a choice effect. And if you can activate this if your opponent controls a monster that's the only requirements only if you if your opponent controls a monster that's all you need to do you don't need to mill you don't need to discard you don't need to pay like well you're gonna kind of pay life points but the requirements are pretty much free at that point so the first event is you take 2000 damage that's pretty hefty but luckily you are gaining 800 back with the fusion material then all face up monsters your opponent controls lose 3000 attack until the end of the turn and that is what makes this card incredible this card is going to decrease everything by 3,000. Essentially, there's nothing that's going to stand up to it. Even Gankuto's new monster, even after activating this effect, is only going to have 500 attack points. You can almost normal summon anything and run right over it if you need to. This card is absolutely insane, especially for a monster that requires a normal summoned fusion material monster and a single tribute material monster. Unlike the other main characters, her fusion... Her Ace's fusion requirements are a lot lighter with a huge, amazing effect. They didn't skip on it just because she doesn't require a two tribute monster. Absolutely insane. You're getting pretty much over anything. The 2000 damage doesn't really hurt too much, especially since you're mostly only taking 12, thanks to the fact that you're only gonna be, you know, gaining 800 anyway. Then for her second effect, you gain 1000 life points. Then choose one monster, level 7 or higher psychic type in your graveyard and special summon it face up. That just screams revive Gitarna. That's what it screams. It's, you're, paying, you're literally just gaining 1000 so that you can decrease it with Gitarna. You can pretty much revive a lot of things you really want. You can revive Fold of Blitz if you are in that range. You can then just go and just blast your opponent for 1500. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work much with Esperade because if you're because Esperade needs you to be a thousand less, and if you're gaining a thousand, you're of course gonna be more. But then if you can manage to pay life points, you can have Esperade just blow up two of your opponent's monsters if you really need to. This card has two absolutely amazing effects with really really easy to bring out fusion material monsters. One of them is not too great, you know, your the effect monster. I mean, the gain 800 is okay, but until you unless you're fusing with it, it's not something you really want to just bring onto the field. And it's not really something that's going to 
help in the long run, long run if you're bringing out if you're putting multiple copies in your deck it's not something you want to keep bringing out it's not going to really help it's mainly because you want to use it for the fusion material unlike candy where candy has so many support cards where it's like it doesn't even if you're not fusing with candy candy still does stuff so i guess that's the only downside with this fusion monster is that single material monster that if you're not ready to fuse with it it's not going to be helpful at all but Overall, you got two incredibly powerful brand new ace monsters. You got a super floodgate that has synergy with its previous form, in which if you could bring out another copy of it, you could change the battle position and lock your opponent out of that normal summon level summon or higher, plus that special summon of level 9 or lower in attack position. Absolutely amazing stuff. And then of course, Candy Live is insane because you're going to take 2000 damage, but there's so many ways to gain life points now in this deck. It, the, the balance, the ebb and flow between gaining and losing, gaining and losing is so high in this deck that you're not really at that point where you're going to really kill yourself or be in danger of doing so. So, you, I mean, taking 2,000 damage is not the worst thing in the world, especially considering what you're going to get out of it, and that is a full field decrease of 3,000. Then if you can even bring a Gitarna, you can just pump up your monsters up by a maximum 900 apiece. You can be hitting some OTK, OTK levels really really fast with this card the only sad part about this is that um the guitar is the only ace monster that didn't get a fusion so far yummy ruler got it seven's row magician drag yes got it and it's like ah i really want guitar to have her own hopefully she will hopefully she probably still will in this pack or maybe the next pack i hope she's not left out i know candy is a really important card for Romy now but i really hope guitar does get her fusion monster but with that said what do you guys think about these two cards i think or I mean the fusion monsters that I think they're absolutely amazing. And if you guys enjoyed this, uh, like, comment, subscribe. If you want me to start reviewing any other type of card games, like maybe something like Pokemon or Digimon, I'm not too well versed in them too much about the strategies, but you know, I can give it a go. Or if you just want to see any other rush through cards I should be talking about, or maybe original Yu-Gi-Oh cards, just let me know in the comment section or message me. I'm not sure how you can message me. I mean on Twitter. There we go. So until next time, people, um, if you enjoyed this, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, and peace out.